Peace be with you and welcome to the Redemptorist Novena. Let us begin our devotion with Holy God, we praise thy name. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are grateful to God for the many blessings we have received from Him through the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. Petition set four. And our response is, Pray with us, O loving Mother, that I may always trust and turn to God for help in coping with life's problem. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, that I may be concerned with the needs of the least of my brothers and sisters. Pray with us, O oh, Loving Mother, that I will always try to forgive those who hurt me. Pray with us, O oh, Loving Mother, for family members who are ill. Pray with us, O oh, Loving Mother, for those in my family who need God's guidance and strength. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, for better understanding among members of my family. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, that our youth will do well in their studies and family relationships. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, that our Christian communities will continue to serve one another and those in need. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, that many will respond to God's call to serve in the various ministries of the church. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, for peace in the world. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, for the disabled members of our society. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, for those struggling to find meaning and happiness in life. Pray with us, O oh, loving, loving Mother, for the intentions of those who have written petitions during the past week. Pray with us, O oh, loving Mother. Let us now pray for our own intentions. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our petitions and grant them through the prayers of Mary, our Mother. Amen. Amen. 
Let me now share with you some of the petitions and thanksgiving letters that have come into both our shrines in Ipoh and in Singapore. Petitions My two children are out of work and times are bad. Please intercede for them. Let them not lose faith in God. We pray for thousands who have passed away. Many families are in dire straits. Please, Mother Mary, comfort them. Please protect our school children and keep them safe during this pandemic. I am a frontliner. Please keep me safe so that I will not endanger my family and loved ones. Help our doctors at Puan Bainon Hospital and at the Ipo Specialist Center to persevere and serve with, without community preferences, especially the aged. I pray for Malaysia. Racism seems to be on the increase and also for our government that they will act wisely with justice for the good of all. Please help our migrant workers and the illegal immigrants who have been affected greatly by this pandemic and the areas that have been locked down because of the COVID-19 virus. Some letters of thanksgiving. Dearest Mother Mary, thank you for keeping my family and loved ones far and near and everyone safe since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. We cannot thank you enough for your continued love, mercies and protection for my family, particularly for my husband's well-being, who is a dialysis patient, and for our elderly, sickly and frail parents. They are staying by themselves. For keeping our young adults and teenage kids to manage well with this pandemic, and for keeping their faith strong, Thank you for providing all our needs despite of the struggles we faced. Thank you for the heavenly blessings always. Your loving Catholic daughter. Dear Mother Mary, I can never thank you enough for your kind intercession. Thank you for listening to my worries, my fears and my anxiety for my sons who are now in the UK and the USA. Thank you for praying for them to our Almighty God for protection, safety and support. They are doing well so far and I appreciate your love for them. Thank you, your loving daughter. Last one. Dearest Mary, Mother of God, through your intercession, I have been blessed to become a Catholic 11 years ago. I met and married a good husband nine years ago and have a good career. Ever since then, I've had a little adventure in life. I felt strengthened in my faith and made me grow closer to you and your son. During this journey, I had to do things that I would never have done before. I learned to be more honest in my feelings and when I finally decided to return to the routine of life, you blessed me with job opportunity and a successful interview. I was in, it was indeed a miracle to me, as I have been away from this industry for more than three and a half years, and never did I expect to be able to return as a senior staff. I was prepared to start at the bottom of the corporate ladder, and thus applied for a junior position, but you ended up giving me a managerial role in an area that I was 20 years ago. Thank you and thank God for the trust you have placed in me, and I promised that I will bring the light of Christ to this workplace and let it shine so that people will come to know you and love you too. Your grateful child. 
Let us now continue with our prayer of confidence. Together, Mother of perpetual help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past, we have so often sinned, but with your help, we can conquer, and you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us now share with Mary a prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth, all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, his mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And, and you, you are, are our mother, mother also. also. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for, for giving us Mary to be our mother. She's so loving, so thoughtful, so understanding, so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. Let us now sing this beautiful hymn to Mary. Mother dear, oh pray for me.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning to you all, dear brothers and sisters. Before I be begin my reflection, I really hope you are well and healthy and staying at home. I hope that you are following all the instructions that have been given out to us by the government or by the health ministry. Use sanitizer, put on your mask, Go out only when you need to, otherwise stay at home. So that in this way, you are both protecting yourself and your family members, and you are also protecting others from coming into contact with this virus. So let me now begin with our reflection for this morning. I like to talk about hope in the midst of despair. We have never experienced anything like this before. It has affected every one of us, the whole world. This virus has no boundary and it does not pick and choose people. Every one of us are affected. Whether we are rich, whether we are poor, whether we are migrants in this country, or whether we are citizens, whether we belong to a particular religious group or we do not have any religion, it is affecting all of us. It has radically shifted the type of world that we are so used to. We look around us today, what do we see? Businesses are folding up. Hundreds of people, maybe thousands are without job, have lost their job. Our whole education system has come to a standstill. Our life, some of us go to work, others are working from home. We can't go to the playground to exercise. Parents are no longer rushing around sending their children for one tuition after another. People who are thinking of getting married this year had to postpone their marriages. People who are thinking of celebrating anniversaries have to cancel it. We don't hear about people going on pilgrimages, whether it's Holy Land, whether it's to Fatima, whether it is to Lourdes. We don't hear people talking about it. We don't hear people talking about going to Mata Fair to buy tickets for their next holiday. This is how our world has changed. 
And because of this, some of us are praying like we have never prayed before. Asking God to intercede, to liberate our world by helping us to find a vaccine. Others are angry with God. Why did he allow this to happen? In moments of despair, what is our Christian response? St. Paul will tell us, or will teach us, as Christians, we have to hope. Even though we do not see any signs of hope, we are called to be people of hope. Let me read to you a text taken from Psalm 146. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men in whom there is no help. Happy are those who hope in the Lord, their God. While there is a tendency among us all to hope that the scientists and doctors will come out of the vaccine. But they may make a mistake. They may get it wrong. That vaccine may not cure. But we are hoping that these scientists who are working day in and day out trying to discover a vaccine that can heal us from this virus. There's nothing wrong to hope in these doctors and scientists. Just like you and I hope whenever we take off to go to a particular country, we trust that the pilot will take us to the destination. Or whenever we are sick, we go to a doctor, we trust him that he will diagnose our sickness and he will find a cure. But they are human and we trust. So what are we hoping and trusting during this time of this virus. As Christians, we are called once again to deeply reflect on the prayer, Our Father. We pray like this, Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are hoping God's kingdom will come. For too long a time, our humanity has decided to build their own kingdom, the kingdom of power, the kingdom of greed, the kingdom of division. We come across people talk about nuclear power, non-nuclear power. We talk about first world country and third world country. There's all kinds of divisions that we have created that has divided humanity. What is God's kingdom asking of us? that we will be God's people, not people divided by politicians and business people, but we will be God's people, united. There are glimpses of this wonderful thing happening right now during, in the midst of all this virus. People are coming together. Big multinationals are responding to the need of the poor, feeding, attending to the elderly and the homeless. Even in our own country, we see those kind of responses. We cross racial groups, we cross religious groups, we see people as brothers and sisters, and we try to respond either by feeding, caring, buying them groceries, doesn't matter what their religion is, what their race is. These are glimpses of God's kingdom. That God is telling us that we can live life differently. So what are we hoping? We are hoping that once again during this time of crisis, we will be attentively listening to what God is teaching us all this while. And we will ask God to give us the grace to respond to his invitation to build his kingdom. Sometimes people ask me, where is God now? 
Has he forsaken us? Has he deserted us? Doesn't he care for us? Christian hope teaches us God has taken a plunge to be with us all. Where is God? God is with the people who are sick and suffering and with the people who are dying. Where is God? God is working among scientists and doctors and nurses and all kinds of medical personnel attending to everybody who comes there with their sickness. Where is God? God is among the homeless. God is among the destitute. God has taken a plunge to become intimate with us, to tell us that he is with us in our struggle. As we lose our job, as we struggle for a meal, as we are unable to see our dear and loved ones. We ask God to be with us, that we will not give up on hope. Even our world has shrunk. We will remember God is still God dwelling among us. This morning we ask our Blessed Mother, the Mother who loves us all, the Mother who cares for us, that she will continue to intercede for all of us in our sadness, in our pains, in our struggles, in our uncertainties. May our Blessed Mother continue to pray and intercede for each and every one of us. God bless you all. Let's now pray for the sick. Together, Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your suffering. And if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Together now, let us recite a very beautiful prayer for the pandemic. Mother of perpetual help, with great confidence we come before your holy picture to besiege your intercession. We think of you, Mother, at the foot of the cross. Your heart must have bled to see your son in agony. But your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of sorrows, Pray for us in this time of trial. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted with the coronavirus. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect health care workers who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts so that we may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the joy of having courageously faced up to all the changes of life. Amen. Let us now pray for the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. sacred image with those eyes so sadly sweet mother of perpetual succor see us kneeling at thy feet in thy arms thy child thou bearest so so all thy joy How deep thy sorrow, Mother, thou alone canst know. On thy face he is not gazing, nor on us his child is glass. For his anxious look he fixes on the cross a memorial of your passion we ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood 
that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You live and reign forever and ever. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Amen. Once again, I would like to thank all of you for tuning in please don't forget give us a thumbs up subscribe go to even our parish website and please spread the news of this beautiful novena now we want to pay tribute to pope francis because this is the fifth year of his encyclical laudato si and so we end with this beautiful hymn what is a song what a wonderful world See you next week.